Hey guys, this is John, and welcome to another episode of Climbing the Tactics Training Ladder. I'm back. We're at 2260 since our last solving session, 158 problems in, and coming up on four hours of total solving time. So we're getting some solid stats now. Once I have a big enough sample size, I can take a step back and look at my numbers and even break down. Chess.com allows you to break down and see what tactics that you're weak at, what sort of themes. So I'm excited about that. So let's get started, shall we? Bishop f3. I notice straight away that the king position for white is awkward. The king out on c3. Black's king position, though, is potentially suspect too. We could bring a rook over to e1 and attack that bishop. I don't see any hugely forcing moves that bring an advantage just right off the bat. I mean, no check really makes sense. Maybe queen b5, but c6, I suppose. A capture like knight takes f3 is possible. But rook e1 bringing a rook over is my first instinct. I don't know, though. Black could always cast a lot of that. What about an attack on the queen? So playing, let's say, rook h to f1. This rook is under attack in the corner, so we should address that. Rook h f1. And then wherever the queen goes, maybe scoop up that bishop. Anything wrong with that? Black's queen is lacking squares, isn't it? So if we attack it... Then, like, rook hf1, he'd have to play queen to g2 or h2. I'm liking the look of that for white. Mm, yeah, what about knight d5, though? Knight d5 could always try to uh, give us a check and mess up our position. That's probably why rook hg one is not a good idea. Rook hg one black castles, and queen takes e7 loses to knight d5 with the fork on the king and queen. So let's avoid that. If rook hf1, knight d5, we can play queen takes d5, though, in between move. Yeah, and white's going to emerge up material there. So rook hf1 is currently leading in my list of candidate moves. These pieces are pretty awkward. The bishop on b2, knight on a3, I don't like them so much. But what to do? Rook is under attack on f1, and we want to win that bishop on f3. I'm going to go with this move. Let's see what black throws at us. Okay, so I was intending queen takes d5 against this. I don't think running with the king is a good idea. So, yeah, let's do this, and now we'll scoop up the queen. And problem solved for two hard-earned point, points. So, and with this last move, we also are controlling f6. So you might verify that after c5, kicking the knight away. So like c5, let's say knight b5, we're not running into bishop f6 check with the win of the bishop on b2, so the rook is observing that square. Not much else to discuss on this one, but the initial forcing moves weren't panning out, so then we looked at moves to attack the queen, like rook hf1. Yeah, the checks or the captures weren't leading anywhere that I saw. And to illustrate the line with rook he1 I was talking about, this seems to make sense, saving the rook piling up on the bishop, but after castles, this bishop is immune from capture due to knight d5 check, forking the king and the queen. Oh, by the way, before I go on, I wanted to say thank you to all of you who have been subscribed and watching my channel uh, over the past two years, really any time in the last two years, because I had my channel about that same amount of time. I recently crossed the 20,000 subscriber mark, and I was getting a lot of messages of congratulations. So I will keep pushing, and as long as you guys keep watching, uh, let's do this. Let's keep building the channel and gaining momentum. In the true spirit of not worrying about numbers, though, I'm not going to celebrate 20,000 in particular. You know, some people are saying, are you going to do a special, like, 20,000 subscriber video? And a tactics video is a perfect time to say this, but you shouldn't be too attached to numbers, I feel. So 20,000, 2,200, whatever the number you're shooting for, just do good work. The number will eventually take care of itself. So with that, let's keep going. Mm, pawn endgame. Okay. Okay. White is clearly playing to draw this endgame because black is chasing down the a-pawn effortlessly. So we got to figure out how to do this. Now, in many of these cases, especially when you're fighting against a rook pawn, you want to take a diagonal route with your king. So my first instinct is, let's say king b7, a5, and then king to c6, threatening king b5. So if they push... Hmm... Yeah, if they push a4, then we want to approach with the king again. 
But we do have to be careful how we do that, don't we? So king b7, a5, king c6, a4, what then? King b5, a3, and then our king is in a bad spot. Uh, but then we can play, nah, king c5 is not working. If black does eventually take the pawn on a2, we need our king on c2, but we're quite a ways away from that, aren't we? Okay, so what if we start with pushing the pawn? I mean, a4, king b4, then king b7. Force black to play a5. Then king c6, king takes a4. Again, we're losing that, though. I don't like it. King b7, a5. King c6, a4. Hmm. King d5, king b2, king c4, king takes a2 is again losing. Ah, no it's not. We have king c3 right there. So let me run through that line again. King b7, king b2. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm getting myself confused. King b7, a5, king c6, a4, king d5. Or no, was I saying king d5 or king b5? I think I was saying king d5. Yeah, king d5. And then if king b2, king c4, king takes a2, king c3. And I think we're going to get into the desired c2 square. If king b1, we have king b4. So I'm going to run through that one more time because I'm somehow a little shaky on this. It is 1030 at night. <laughs> so I'm going to give myself a slight excuse. King b7, king b2. And just take the pawn. So king b7, a5 forced. King c6, threatening king b5. So on king c6, a4 must be played. Then we're playing king d5. So again, taking that diagonal route. Then black can either play a3 or king b2. If king b2, I already established king c4, king takes a2, king c3. And I think I just hold. So king on d5, what if they play a3? Then we're going to go king e4, continuing with the diagonal route. Black plays king b2, we play king d3, king takes a2, king c2, and again we slide into the c2 square. Okay, I'm probably not going to get many rating points for this one, but most importantly, I figured it out. So the diagonal route, and now we're going around. The geometry of the chessboard is weird like this sometimes. Maybe not weird, it's not, that's the wrong word, it's fascinating like, like this. So... Yeah, you don't want to just go straight up the board chasing the a-pawn. Let me show what would happen if you did that. So to start, if white just played king a7, a5, king a6, a4, really mechanical like this, a3, king a4, king b2, you're stuck on the wrong side of the pawn. Black will win the pawn here, and we're one square away from being able to draw the game. The king can't reach c2. Black will play king b1, uh, deny our king the ability to stop this pawn, king b3, a2, the pawn queens. So every move matters, and white must strike out on a diagonal route right away in order to get to that c2 square. That's the most efficient way to do it. And the whole time, you're attacking the pawn, or at least stalking the pawn. Here we're directly attacking it, and after a5, king, c6, we're stalking it. If black goes here, then uh, we have this move. Actually, we even have a4, don't we? And then black would be the one uh, who would have to scurry to make a draw a5, king, b5, king here, take here, and black does succeed in making draw. So, nice example involving rook pawns in the endgame. Yeah, king c6, a4, king d5, and uh, no choice for black at this point other than a3 or king b2. Both moves are just going to lead to a draw for the same reason. Yeah, king b2, uh, I was saying king here, and then if take, king c3, and even though black can deny us c2, unfortunately for them, their pawn isn't quite far enough advanced. King b4, and we're going to catch it. All right, I like that one. Hmm, pressure against f7. This king is overloaded right now. If we play bishop takes f7, king takes f7, then we can grab on h7. But maybe we get our queen in trouble after bishop f5, attacking that queen. What about rook takes d7, queen takes d7, e6? That looks powerful, doesn't it? Ooh, that's awfully attractive. 
Rook takes d7, queen takes d7, e6, pawn takes, just bishop takes, we win the queen. So black would probably have to move the bishop in that case. Let's say bishop to c5. But then still e takes f7. Not e takes d7, because then rook takes e4, but e takes f7 is crushing. I'm doing a quick material count here. First time I glanced at this position, I thought the material was even, and I think it is. Yeah, four minor pieces each. All the pawns cancel. So rook takes d7, e6. Yeah, that just appears to win material. So I'm going to go for that. Yeah, and here, as I was saying, important that we take this guy and not d7 due to rook takes e4. So the tip-off in this one was this strong bishop on b3. This looks like it came from a Ruy Lopez Spanish game, and white's got this bishop on b3, observing the pawn on f7. My first instinct was to take and then do this, but we only win a pawn in that line, and also our queen might get trapped. Like, I wasn't liking the looks of bishop f5. Yeah, I mean, our queen is trapped here, isn't it? We could throw an e6, queen takes on e6, but that queen is not coming back. But that planted the seed in my head that maybe it has something to do with the f7 pawn. So I was looking for ways to exploit that. e6 right away, trying to add an attacker to uh, f7 and also attack here, just doesn't work because a bishop takes. But also the rook here is handy, and that's what eventually caused me to look at this. Clearing the way for the pawn to advance. And as I was saying, if black takes, then they lose their queen. So rook takes d7, forcing move, but the bishop on b3 was the thing that really clued me into this. Okay, next one. We got seven points for that one. Okay, forcing moves. Knight b4 check or rook takes c3. Both moves look promising at first blush. But knight b4 check, king b3, and uh, queen a2, is that just mate? Is that a mate in two? Knight b4, that takes away the d3 square too. Knight b4, king b3, queen a2, checkmate. I don't think I'm missing anything. Knight is supported by the bishop on e7. I don't think we have a mate in one, so I'll settle for a mate in two right here. I'm not even going to look at rook takes c3 further because I think that's unnecessary. Check. And mate. And another seven points for that. Hmm. Yeah, and surprisingly only a 50% pass rate on this 2281 rated problem. That is shocking to me. I bet most people just look at rook takes c3. Rook takes c3, it's the flashier move, sacrificing a rook for a pawn. But does that even really work out? Rook takes c3, b takes c3, queen takes c3, king b1. There's a lot of pieces around the white king, but I don't know if we're checkmating. And anyways, if you spot a maiden two, don't worry about calculating uh, any further. I mean, unless you have a maiden one, but there is no maiden one apparent here. This is just a pure force line. Knight b4, pawn is pinned. Due to the rook on c8, can't go to d3 with the king, so they got to go there, and now we just back the queen up. Maybe also because this motif is a little weird. A queen moving backwards, supported by a knight on b4. King's way out on b3. It's kind of an unusual position. All right. Queen to d2, so white is in this pin. I'd like to get the knight added. I think this could be the missing ingredient to make this a decisive pin or a decisive attack in such situations you might also look at a move like g5 trying to play g4 but queen takes g5 is going to be the answer there so how do i make this knight relevant and where do i want the knight i'd love to land it on e3 so two routes possible knight f6 to g4 or knight b6 to c4 don't think i can play knight e5 just because a pawn takes Liking knight b6 better, it doesn't obstruct the rook, and knight c4 would come with tempo then on the queen. So how is white surviving? I mean, knight b6, it's kind of slow, but what in the world is white going to do? If white tries to trade queens with queen e1, then we have rook takes f3. That's an important point, I think. And the rook is overloaded. So I think I'm going to go with this move. Let me just verify one thing. Knight b6, what if queen g5? Queen g5, knight c4, and then let's say king h3. I guess I can just take on f3 then. There's a check on d8, king f7. Mm, I think I'm escaping there. I think my king is, yeah, going up to h5 and to freedom. Knight f6, as I said, I don't like as much because 
that blocks our rook, might, might be able to reply with like rook e1 or something. So knight b6 appears to be the move. I'm going to do it. Mm, rook f2. This defense I didn't anticipate. I mean, knight c4 is still good. And after queen e2, we have rook takes f3. That's important. Similar tactic to queen e1. So if knight c4, queen g5, what am I doing? Knight e3 check, and probably again taking on f3. I think that's going to be the refutation. Any sense in playing rook takes f3 right away? Mm, nah. Let's continue as planned. Yeah, queen e2, so now... Ah, queen e2, they, if rook takes f3, queen takes on f3. So that's one thing I missed. All right, so I'm flying by the seat of my pants right now, trying to adjust for something that I missed. I hate to do this, but I mean this happens when you're calculating. So what if I play knight e3 check instead? Knight e3 check if king h3, queen g4 is mate. So knight e3, the king has to go to g1 or h1. And then I can bring my queen down to b1 in either case. But am I winning? Queen blocks? Let's say knight e3, king g1, queen b1, queen e1. Where's my win there? I do not see a forced win. Hmm. Maybe I should look at rook takes f3 here. Rook takes f3, queen takes f3, knight e3. King h3. Hmm. Queen e6, g4. And they're escaping. That's not working. Pretty sure it's knight e3 right here, but I want to figure out what to do against king g1. It's crucial. Ah, maybe just knight g4. Knight e3, king g1, knight g4. Yes, that appears to be good. Swing the knight over, attack the rook. If the rook goes back to f1, they lose the queen. If they trade queens on e4, we take with the pawn, and then the white knight and the white rook are both under attack. So we win material. That's nifty. I like that. Wow, this knight is just doing work in this problem. And if rook g2, the knight on f3 hangs. So now let's take here. <laughs> so the knight went from d7 to b6 to c4 to e3 to g4 in this problem. Very nice. Attractive solution. And I didn't see the whole thing. I, For one thing, I overlooked rook f2. I mean, the pressure of the clock does get to you sometimes. That's why, especially if you're a new solver, I would recommend solving uh, problems untimed. Here on chess.com, you can remove the timer if you like. I do it with the timer uh, mainly for the purposes of the rating. I want to see you guys, have you guys see my rating progression over time. But if the clock is really bothering you, just shut it off. Don't worry about it. So I mentioned this pin from the beginning, but when you're really thinking of any position in chess, you should be asking yourself what pieces are good for you and what pieces are not good, what pieces are not operating at their maximum potential. And here, that's clearly the black knight. The queen on e4 is gorgeous. It's centralized. It's pinning this knight. The rook on f8 is also attacking the pin piece. But this is the piece that we need to uh, improve. Its prospects are not good. And before I move it somewhere, I was asking myself, like, what square would I like to land it on? And this is just a useful exercise you can apply to many positions. Ask yourself if you could just, uh, you know, choose in the position where to put the piece, where would it go? And in this case, I think e3 is the answer. That would be a fork on the king and the rook. And our queen conveniently already controls that square, disputes that square. So that's why knight b6 came to mind, along with knight f6, but I already mentioned the downside of knight f6. So knight b6, now we're threatening that with tempo. Queen g5 was an interesting attempt. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> Wait a second, what happened here? I did mean to do that, but the board is not displaying. Hmm. Okay, so for some reason I can't move the pieces on this one. When I click analysis, it just goes blank. So that's a bug. <laughs> but yeah, what I was going to show is that after knight b6, we're threatening knight c4 with tempo, and queen g5 would have been interesting. But I think in that case, knight c4 is still good. Yeah, and the queen out on g5 doesn't do much anyways. So I had to readjust, though, after rook f2 and find the right line because on queen e2 i was thinking rook takes f3 was going to work 
banking on rook takes f3, queen takes e2. But of course, white would respond with queen takes f3 instead. So I stopped myself from doing that and eventually found the solution. King h3 fails to queen g4 mate, so white has to go to the back rank. And on either king h1 or king g1, knight g4 is good. White has too many pieces under attack, every single piece under attack. Very nice problem. Next one coming up. Bishop back to b4. This looks like a king's Indian-esque position. Black trying to checkmate white on the king side. So bishop g4 is going to run into queen f3, but then we can back the bishop up, can't we? Bishop g4. So if bishop h3 requires white to play g3, then we win the exchange at the very least. If we play pawn to f3, then g3 could be played, and unless our queen can work its way into h3 and checkmate, then I think white will be fine. Yeah, I think it's probably bishop h3, queen f3, bishop g4. Just taking a head count here. It's equal material. No pawns have been exchanged, just a pair of minor pieces. I'm going to go with this. Yeah, and back it up. And here we can just play queen takes h4, I believe. Let me double check. Yeah, that's going to be sufficient. White could play g3 here in a bid to save the queen, but after f takes g3, their position is terrible. Already down two pawns. Hmm. So the queen on f3, it's lacking squares. So even though white is pairing the immediate threat on g2, if we lean on that queen again, then yeah, nowhere for it to go. I'm trying to think what uh, what might tip you off about this one, but I mean bishop h3 is obvious enough. A developing move with tempo, threatening mate. I mean, what more could you ask for in bringing out a piece into the game? Just seeing the follow up after queen f3, not particularly hard though. The queen is holding h uh, g2, so it's natural to look for moves that would try to deflect it. And bishop g4. Doesn't play for mate, but yeah, queen's running out of squares. Bishop on d3 is a big hindrance. Also, the pawn structure is kind of weird for white. Normally, white would like to have a pawn on f3 rather than uh, a piece being able to occupy that square. If white had a pawn on f3, then their structure would be nice and intact from g2 to d5. Next one. Mm-hmm. Okay, so white has that bishop on e7 pinned. But taking it right away... If we take it right away, let's say with the pawn. So d takes e7. Then we're threatening to queen. So if rook takes e7, I wonder if just d6 is working. Threaten the rook. And if rook takes e7, d takes c7, that pawn is going. That's looking good. Black has some random checks they can throw in, but I don't think these checks are leading anywhere. We can always escape. If rook h2, king d3 hitting the rook. If rook d4, we're going to walk our king over to g2. Make it sensible. Or even play king c2 is probably fine. I think d7 is a little too fancy. Black could just move their king. I mean, maybe we would think about rook a7, but also that strikes me as a fancy move. Taking followed by c7 seems really clear in my eyes. I think that c-pawn is just going to be a beast when black captures on c7. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Okay, problem solved. So if the analysis or the problem had continued, rook takes c7, pawn takes c7, this pawn is just promoting. Black can throw in a couple useless checks, but... We're escaping. And the rook is lost. We're threatening it two ways, and it's pinned to the king on f7. And again, some checks will not bother us. Nothing really else to talk about in this one. I was just making sure that if black checked on d4, they didn't have some perpetual. We are going to walk over here. I can eventually go attack that rook. And the threat of queening on e8 is always curtains for black. Okay, nice one. Let's keep going. So black is guarding the h7 square. A lot of firepower coming down on g7. Black is up a ton of pawns, aren't they? But a lot of firepower coming down on g7. Also knight f6 check is possible. Knight f6 check just wins the exchange. If we want it. Rook takes would be forced and then queen takes. Ah, but does it? Black has queen takes g3 then. A desperado. Desperado. 
Why don't you come to your senses? That's a different story, though. <laughs> okay, so knight f6 is maybe not leading to the desired outcome. Knight takes g7, just rook takes g7, I think is fine. Rook takes g7 is interesting. Rook takes g7, ah, okay, yeah, that's cool. Rook takes g7, rook takes g7, knight f6 check, king f7, queen takes g7. Drag the king into the fork. King takes g7, knight takes e8, go pick up the queen. And what's up with the material after all that? White's up a rook. We still have all these pawns to contend with, but I don't think we're getting much more than this out of that uh, initial position here. So, yeah, let's go down this road. Check. And now this beautiful move. That's nice. Another position where the knight is doing work. I was a little bit worried about these pawns, though, at the end. I mean, I wonder if the problem continues. Like, what happens at b4 at the very end? This would be a nightmare to play in a fast game. <laughs> I suspect white should be able to gather these pawns somehow, but black does have five connected pawns to deal with. Uh, white, white has those to deal with, that is. So just forcing moves right here. Yeah, the solution is going to have to come pretty fast on this one in view of that bastion of pawns, as I mentioned. White's not even up any material. And since black's last move covered the h7 square, I didn't think it had anything to do with that. I think the key squares here are f6 and g7. And it's just getting the move order right. Yeah, and knight f6 does run into that desperado move. Queen takes g3, as I mentioned. Okay, next one. Hmm. So black down the exchange, but white only very tenuously holding the rook on d2. I feel like if we lean on that piece a bit, white might collapse. Our knight is within striking distance. Queen e5 is the move I'd, I'd like to play. Springs to mind. Queen e5, if queen takes e5, rook takes d2, king e3, rook d3, followed by taking the queen at the very end. So queen e5, how does white even defend? If queen to c1, there's knight d3 check, winning the queen. Queen to b4, there's knight to d3 check, winning the queen again. Rook e3, there's queen takes c3. Yeah, I think that's it. Getting the queen involved. I like it. Queen e3. Again, another move I didn't see. <laughs> uh, I'm just blanking on some of these moves. Okay, knight takes e4. Knight takes e4. Queen takes e4. Rook takes d2. Looks good, but is it decisive? I don't know. I want something decisive. Knight takes e4, queen takes e4, rook takes d2. Let's say king f3, king f3 looks safe. I mean, white's king is in danger, but I don't see a direct win. Hmm. <clears throat> oh, it's a shame that I missed this move. Queen e3. I'm thinking knight takes e4 still, but I want something better. Could also switch up the order of moves. Rook takes d2 and then knight takes e4, but rook takes e4, the game will continue. It's just equal material there. Trickier problem than I gave it credit for. I mean, on the line I'm looking at, black wins a pawn, I think, with knight takes e4 to start, but is there a better way? This rook is hanging now, so maybe we have to check our ambitions. Hmm. I'm going to go with knight takes e4. Hmm, I was right. Okay. Well, now we take here. Problem solved. Ooh, <laughs> I thought there was going to be something more complex than that, but I guess not. We only got one point, but I'm okay with that, given that I missed queen e3. So the queen is the thing that uh, we want to try to remove here, or at least remove it as a defender of the rook on d2. 
As I said from the beginning, the rook on d2 is really tenuously defended. What was white's last move? Rook from g1 to e1. That's because if white takes on a2, they run into knight takes e4. So white was reinforcing that e4 point. And kind of like one of the problems we did just a moment ago, uh, you have to think about which piece needs to be improved. I think our rook is doing a great job attacking d2, pinning the rook to the king. The knight is active on a great square, observing e4, but the queen isn't doing its part. So that's why I looked at this deflection move, queen e5. And if queen takes, we insert rook takes d2 check. And if white tries to approach the rook, rook d3, we get the rook to a safe square. And then wherever the king goes, we'll just take the queen next move. We'll, we'll be up a piece. So I looked at that, and of course, if rook takes a2, queen takes c3. Defending the queen with rook c1 will lead to disaster too, like knight takes e4. So, wish I would have seen this, but yeah, at least black does win the material back after this. And had the game continued, let's say white plays, I mean, almost any of the king, king moves, king f1, king g1, or king f3, I think black could go take on a5. Let's say like king f1, go snatch this pawn. White's king is still in jeopardy. White does have a check down here, but I don't think this will lead to anything. Black could always check here. There's probably even something better, but that will force the rook right back. Let's say queen here, threatening queen f3. Yeah, black's king is easily the more safe of the two. Queen takes b3. Hmm. Queen defending the bishop on b7. Equal material. No forcing moves that look like they need to be seriously examined. So I'm looking at ways to separate the queen from defending the bishop. I'm also looking at rook b1. While tempting, rook b1 runs into queen takes b1 check, bishop takes b1, rook to c1, and white is the one losing. So that's not going to work. So what about bishop b5? That attacks the bishop and severs the coordination between the queen and the bishop. So bishop b5, if bishop takes e4, we take the rook on c8. If bishop b5, bishop a8, we take the rook on c8. So rook b8 may be forced, but then just queen c7, probably just approach, double attack on the rook and the bishop, and this queen is such a long ways away from being able to assist. Our bishop is also a target on d3, so I think it makes sense to move it. So yeah, let's do that. Now we'll approach and take that piece. Okay. Okay. This is a motif I've seen before, like a bishop in particular being the annoying uh, piece to sever the connection between a queen and another piece. Like a bishop on a square protected by a pawn like that is so stable, and it just does the trick beautifully here. Yeah, the queen can't go anywhere to defend the bishop. Bishop needs to stay on b7 guarding the rook, so black's hand is forced. Rook b8 if they want to save the bishop right now, and then queen c7 just lean on him a little bit. Double attack, wins a piece. And that's instructive, the trap that was kind of set early on. Rook b1 looks good at first sight, attacking the queen. And if the queen moves, he loses the bishop. But it would backfire horribly due to this. And white's the one who gets back rank checkmated. Okay, so white has just sacrificed a piece. We have checks available. We have knight takes f6 and queen d8. I like queen d8 first, so I'm going to look at that. Queen d8, king has to go to g7 or f7. In both cases, we can take on f6 with check. You know, there's also this awkward position of the bishop and knight. I'm going to put that in the back of my head right now because that could be helpful if ever I could, like, you know, say win the bishop on a3. So king, queen to d8, king to, let's say, f7. Queen takes f6, king e8. Feels like they're scampering away there. King goes to the center. The queen and a knight are always a formidable attacking force, but I'm just not seeing it there. I kind of want to play queen h6, but knight d5 is annoying as a defense, isn't it? Getting the knight back. So maybe a slower move probably will not work. So what about knight takes f6? Knight takes f6, king to f7, let's say. I could try to play the knight back somewhere, like... Knight to g4, threatening knight e5. That looks kind of weird, though. And again, slow. But maybe. I've seen weirder things. Oh, what about queen d8, king f7, knight d6? Definitely need to look at that. Not taking the pawn, but trying to chase the king. 
Because queen d8, king g7, I feel, should be really risky. Queen e7 or even queen takes f6 right away. Probably queen e7. I think queen e7 is going to lead to mate. Yeah, that mates. So queen d8, king f7 is forced. Then knight d6. And if king g6, probably queen g8 is going to mate. So king g7, I think, is forced. And then queen e7. Queen e7, king g6, queen f7. Yeah, there, there just has to be a checkmate there. The king is getting forced out into the open. And the queen and the knight are tightening the noose. See, I haven't worked that out in its entirety, but I'm like 95% sure if I get to that position, it's winning. So, yeah, I'm going to go with this. Maybe I should be even more certain, but... Like, once you start looking at a forcing line like this, you kind of just, like, something clicks and you just know it's the right answer. So, the f6 pawn is the distraction in this one. It's so tempting to take it, especially with check, right? Queen takes f6, but then black is getting away with king e8. And white may not have a win. So, instead, playing king to d, uh, knight to d6, rather, forcing the king to g7 or f7, will still probably pick up the pawn with check anyways. But white's pieces are much more... Uh, better place than in the other lines for the final assault on the black king. If the king goes back here, queen f7, queen f8, mate. So the position where I said I was like 95% certain there was a mate was right here. I just didn't work out of the, all the details, but there's too much firepower coming at black. Like let's say king g5, uh, probably knight e4 is going to cost black the queen. h4 is probably just mating very shortly, yeah, king here, check, here, queen g5 mate. So it's over. In a tournament game, I would have been extra thorough, though, and maybe gone a couple moves further just to prove that it's a checkmate. Also, if this were an untimed problem, I would have done the same. So, again, I know it seems like I may be being a hypocrite here, but since I'm getting to the higher rating stratospheres, I'm sometimes taking a couple shortcuts when I'm, like, almost certain that there's a solution. But in a game, if I had the time, I would not be doing this. I would, I would calculate to mate, to be certain. No other, other lines really need examination here. If king to f6, queen e7 is still good. Again, we're not going to take the pawn yet, because we can take the pawn under better circumstances. And if king here, take, mate. Nice one. Knight takes a7. Hmm. So rook takes c3 is obvious, but then white is playing knight takes c8. And what's our follow-up? Rook c2 threatening mate, but they have queen d6 to bail out. Love to get rid of that queen d6 resource. What could it be other than rook takes c3, though, to start? I'd have a hard time believing it could be anything else. So let's start with rook takes c3, knight takes c8. I think that's the... The position to look at. Hmm. Also, if that bishop were not there, we could threaten rook takes h3. So rook takes c3, knight takes c8. Does a bishop move make sense? Like bishop takes d4. But again, queen d6 bails out. So that queen trade is pesky. What about rook c6? Just trying to attack the queen. White could play queen b7 or queen a8, maybe. So I'm not seeing it yet. Rook takes c3, knight takes c8. Could it be somehow trapping the knight even after the queen trade? But I don't think so. That's not working either. Ah, maybe bishop f4. Rook takes c3, knight takes c8, bishop f4. Doing what I was intending, covering the d6 square. And threatening rook takes h3. That's vicious. Granted, white could play king g1, but then rook c2 should win. White does not have a convenient way to guard the g2 square. Yeah, that that's strong. That just completely neuters white's counterplay. Involving queen d6. I like it. Let's do it. Bishop d6, cover the square. Yeah, and problem solved. 
I think I would have taken this one a little further if I was the tactics training program because it's worth pointing out that after bishop f4, black is threatening rook takes h3, pawn is pinned. Maybe also threatening some other stuff, but rook takes h3 is the obvious one. So it would have been cool if the problem went king here and now rook c2 with a nearly unstoppable checkmate coming on g2. So in that one, I was just working backwards, reciprocal thinking, as I've touched on many times in this series, where you have a goal in mind. For black, it's to threaten something without white being able to trade queens with queen d6 check. And this goal uh, leads us to the right move eventually in bishop f4. There's not really any other move. I was also looking at rook c6, but I don't want to take my rook too far away from the action. Rook c6, I'd have queen b7, and then he's pinning us. So then it just clicked with bishop f4. And I even said myself that I wanted to make way for the rook to operate on the third rank and threaten rook takes h3 too. Rook takes h3 and rook c2. Let's do two more problems. I'm feeling good tonight. King f1. So this bishop's under attack. We could take on c3, but that seems rather lame. White has some issues with this bishop. If bishop takes f3, bishop takes f3, knight takes d4, then bishop takes d5, queen takes d5, knight takes d5. We do take on d2 at the end. But I'm not sure that was all forced. For example, after bishop takes f3, could white play a takes b4 even? I mean, I guess their bishop on d4 is hanging, though. So bishop takes f3, bishop takes f3. Knight takes d4. Maybe then a takes b4. And there's even uh, bishop takes f3, bishop takes f3, knight takes d4, bishop takes d5, queen takes d5, a takes b4. And that might not be winning for black either. This one's tricky with all the exchanges possible in the center. What about rook takes e2 to start? So sacrifice the rook for this pesky light square bishop, which... Upon taking on f3 is threatening d5. So that's a move that I like the look of immediately because if rook takes e e2, queen takes e2, knight takes d4, then the queen is under attack, so they don't have time to scoop up the bishop here. So rook takes e2, king takes e2, runs into knight takes d4, pin knight. Knight takes d2, obviously, out of the question. So I think on rook takes e2... Queen takes e2 would be the best bet. And then knight takes d4. Let's just confirm that after something like queen e4, white isn't escaping somehow. Because black does have a lot of pieces under attack. But I think I can save them all. Like, let's say bishop takes f3. That should probably be okay. Yeah, bishop takes f3. If queen takes d4... Hmm... Bishop takes c3, I guess. So in this entire combination, we're only getting two minor pieces for a rook. So it's a modest win in material, but it seems like the right path with everything under attack. What if we play knight takes d4 first? If knight takes d4 immediately, white is playing knight takes d4 in reply. I mean, even that has some merit, but I don't think it's the way. Knight takes d4, knight takes d4, knight takes c3. Bishop takes g4 is possible. It's very messy, but possible. Mm, now I'm doubting myself, and I'm looking at knight takes d4. Rook takes e2 is looking good. That's still my main move, but... I'm somehow thinking knight takes d4 might be better now. Knight takes d4, knight takes d4. Knight takes c3. Mm. Bishop takes g4. It's just a hard position to process. There's a lot of stuff happening here. Bishop takes g4. Hmm. 
Maybe black just takes on d4 in that case. Like queen takes d4 or something. Even knight takes d4. But then white takes on c3. I don't like that. Okay, I'm going to go with rook takes e2. I feel confident in this one. I mean, I get two minors, and I don't see a problem with it. So, yeah, I'm just going to go with that. I know I only got one point, but as I said, there was a lot of traffic in the center here. There's, like, so many exchanges. Knight takes d4, bishop takes c3, rook takes e2, bishop takes f3. All those are forcing moves that have to be examined. Knight e3 check is a forcing move, uh, the most forcing move. It comes with check, but I didn't even investigate that because pawn takes. It didn't, doesn't seem like it would be the solution. So, yeah, rook takes e2, and any recapture of the rook entails some drawback. Knight takes e2 is going to drop the queen on d2. King takes e2. Knight takes d4 check. This knight is pinned. So, yes, white played the best one, but after knight takes d4, as I said, black is getting two minors for their trouble. And let's say if queen e4... Uh, I was thinking of a few different things here, but... I was thinking bishop takes f3 is going to work. Bishop takes f3 here, and then maybe take on c3. Something like this. Also, probably knight takes c3 right away is working too. Unless he can reply with this move. But even this, even if black had to do... Uh, I don't know about this actually, because <laughs> these two binary pieces are under attack. I was thinking bishop c5, but then this move saves. So, yeah, still some accuracy required, but I think bishop takes f3 is safe enough. Okay, last problem of the evening. Black's king is open. Black is missing a g-pawn here in front of their king. First move I'm looking at, rook g3, threatening h4. Also, if the king moves to the h-file, then we have rook takes g5. So rook g3, what does black do? They probably have to play queen to g6, I believe. Queen g6, but that puts another piece on the same file. So... I think there's several ways we could play against that. Namely, just moving the queen back. Like, queen all the way back to d1 comes to mind. Threatening h4. And then if bishop takes c1, rook takes g6, and then followed by queen takes c1, and we'll have queen and knight against two rooks at the very end. So rook g3 is just looking super obvious and good to start. I mean, this knight and the rook are not participating, but this is such an immediately good attacking piece. I want to swing it over. I know I was talking about improving the prospects for your pieces, but I think rook g3, queen g6, queen d1 is the idea. And then immediately threatening h4, to which black has no defense. Let's do it. Yeah, and it's got to be this square, because otherwise, otherwise they could take on c1 and get two pieces, two rooks for the queen. And here they will get two pieces, but we'll get the bishop too. I was just pausing for a second because I saw bishop takes b2. But on bishop takes b2 at the very end, we can play knight a4 if necessary. Along with moving the rook is probably good, but knight a4, attack the bishop. And once more, if they take, we're getting that, that minor piece. So this is a problem where the first move is obvious, rook g3, but the follow-up thereafter has to be worked out. And after rook g3, no other move is any good for black other than queen g6, because white is threatening h4. And if the king flees to the h-file, like king h7, we have rook takes g5, as I was pointing out. So, yep, you just want to avoid something like queen e2 for the reason I was describing. Black would get two rooks for the queen and could fight on. Okay, so we crossed 2300 in this climbing the tactics training session. Very exciting. I'm going to keep going. This is turning into a long series. I think this is lucky number 13, so video number 13. And I hope you guys are enjoying the series so far, and I hope it's helping you with your own tactics. Always solving for accuracy. You know, I know I waver on that sometimes, but with all of these, really, I'm trying to get the solution in my head. Like, if I'm making a, a guess, if you will, it's usually like a very educated guess, like one of those 95% guesses. Uh, but even I, like you could see, like I miss certain resources. It's you, you're always going to miss something. I mean, we're not we're humans. We can't play perfect chess, so you're going to miss a move every once in a while, uh, like that queen e3 move I missed in one of the problems when it was queen and two rooks against queen knight and rook. Uh, also in the problem when it was queen rook and knight against queen rook and knight, I missed a defensive option. 
but uh, I was always proceeding down the right path at the very least. So pretty good session. All right, let me know if you guys have any questions on these and happy solving to you. Thanks again for 20,000 subscribers. Really appreciate that, guys. And let's keep it up. Like I said, I'll keep posting videos as long as you guys keep watching. All right, talk to you guys later. Bye.